Hi, my name is Tom Wallace. My wife Lisa and I own the Shea Tree Rest Treehouse here in Lafayette, New York. And uh, today I thought I would just do a, a brief video tour of the treehouse and property um, in case you're thinking of staying here, which we would love to have you do. Um, it'll give you a, a, a little overview of what you can expect when you get here. We built the uh, treehouse about five years ago on a 17 acre hardwood lot in Lafayette. We live just up the road about a quarter mile, so if you if you need something from us, we're available. If you don't, um, you won't see us. Um, other than that, uh, here's the uh, tour of the property. Hope you enjoy it. So the first thing you'll see when you come down, and uh, you either have walked down if there has recently been any rain or rain is forecast for the time of your um, stay here, you'll have to uh, park your car at the top and walk about a quarter mile down the hill to the treehouse. Um, it's a pretty manageable walk. If it's muddy, you want to bring uh, some boots, maybe a flashlight. Um, but other than that, if it's nice out and has been nice and will be nice for the time you're going to be here, you can drive your car down here for the most part. Uh, we'll, we'll make that assessment when you get here. But uh, you'll see when you get here, there's seven stone steps that lead down a set of stairs. There's a grapevine railing, which was harvested here on property as uh, all the balusters in the uh, railings for the treehouse were harvested here on property as well. There'll be a teardrop platform down here that uh, is the start of a 60 foot long footbridge that leads over to the main body of the treehouse. Before we go up there, I'm going to take you uh, quickly down to the lower deck area. There's a set of steps here. A uh, small garden here on the left hand side with some trillium, daffodils, and uh, a few other things. Farther over, you'll see a large fire pit area. If you're going to have a larger fire, we ask that you do it here and not in the fire pit in the down, uh, down in the deck that I'm going to bring you to shortly. A couple Adronic chairs over there for your use. As you pass down to the right hand side is the generator hut. If you're running the generator, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, you'll be able to hear it inside that hut. Another set of steps here leading down to the uh, larger lower deck. Um, this is a great place to have your meals, um, have a drink in the evening. Uh, it's just a very peaceful spot. There's a bar barbecue grill here that's included for your use. A larger seating area with a fire pit in the middle. Um, again, we ask you to keep fires in this pit small. And there is some uh, firework, firewood that's provided here in a little tote. Um, you'll have to collect your own kindling wood, but that's all part of the experience. A smaller seating area over in the corner. So this gives you an idea of the uh, view you'll have from this lower deck. There's a nice babbling brook down there that runs through the property. And the lower deck is also the location of the shower unit, which is over here in the corner. Um, there's a shower curtain there that you can close, obviously. The unit uh, doesn't have, does not have uh, any adjustment really at the, uh, at the shower itself. Um, it's regulated from an on-demand hot water heater that's upstairs in the treehouse. We've preset the temperature and the pressure um, that works the majority of the time. To start the shower unit, there's a simple little black switch here. You'll need to slide it down. It can be a little tricky to get down, but uh, as soon as you do, water automatically comes on. It's all preset in terms of temperature and pressure. Um, should be fine for you. Um, when you're done with your shower, just again push up now on the switch, shuts the water off. You don't have to mess with anything else down here. That blue valve is preset. You don't have to touch that. So that's basically the lower shower unit, or the lower shower unit, the lower deck unit that includes the shower. And uh, now we'll take you up to show you the main body of the treehouse itself. You'll notice there's a uh, platform in that tree over there. That's a zip line. We don't make that available for guests, unfortunately. Um, 
just something to, you know liability that we don't want to incur you'll see a gate here as you pass through the uh, the footbridge and this bridge is pretty stable it's not only supported by cables but also by posts that are connected to the ground through footers there's a small deck area here as you first get to the treehouse. Also wanted to show you our sign done by my daughter, Audrey. So on this smaller deck area, there's a, uh, a good quality cooler that we will uh, have some ice there for you. It should last you a day or two. Uh, maybe longer. There's also a can opener here on, or a bottle opener, in case you're wondering, that's included there. A little table here. This is a good spot to uh, cook your breakfast. There's a Coleman propane cook stove that's inside. Um, you notice a bird feeder here. Um, there's always some birds around uh, that enjoy that. It's nice being able to see them in the morning. Also, there's a hummingbird feeder here, and they're generally here as well. So from here, there's another 30-foot long cable bridge that uh, goes out to my favorite spot on the property. There's a 12-foot octagonal, I call it a viewing deck here, observation deck. You'll find here two zero-gravity chairs that uh, recline fully. It's a really nice, comfortable spot to kick back enjoy the canopy here a couple other chairs over here and then from here you, you really have a great view of the property you really get a sense of being up in the canopy of the trees here a little babbling brook down below passes right through and then on the other side is a uh, a hill that goes up to a set of power lines that's up there at the end of our property um, in the in the afternoons here the sun is shining on that hill um, gives you a real nice view but a very peaceful spot here as you can see and you get a nice perspective of the rest of the treehouse from here and the lower deck down below so you can kind of get an idea how things are situated so now we'll pass back over the the bouncy bridge to the main part of the treehouse itself. And here uh, you'll find your on-demand hot water heater. You should not have to touch this unit. It's all set. Um, there's nothing really you should have to do here. If the temperature is, is uh, way too hot or way too cold, there's a small adjustment that can be made here you'll see it's down pretty far because um, that minimum is still pretty hot. Um, if you absolutely have to change it, make a small adjustment there. Um, don't change anything over here. The small adjustment here will change the temperature dramatically. If you run out of water during your stay here, it means that uh, this 30 gallon holding tank has been emptied. Um, it should last at least two days um, depending on how many showers you take. Each shower takes, depending on the person, between oh, 5 and 10 gallons. But uh, if you've run out of water, this has run empty. And what you need to do, there's a small hose over here. Lift this up, make sure it's pointing in the tank. And then there's a, uh, a valve here, which you need to rotate 90 degrees to the rear. As soon as you do that, obviously you hear the water come on. And this water is gravity fed from a holding tank up on the hill, 275 gallon tank. Um, so that'll give you plenty of water for a long, long time. Water ultimately comes from the creek. We do treat it with uh, Clorox, but it's not considered potable water. We don't want you drinking it. Perfect for showers and for when well, we brush our teeth and uh, cleaning things but don't drink it. Um, when you're done filling the tank, make sure you stand here and monitor it while it fills because you don't want it to let it overflow and 
empty that 275 gallon tank up the hill. All right, so at some point, we have given you a four digit entry code that you'll type into this um, electronic lock. Uh, you simply punch your four digits in, you'll hear it beep and you'll see a green flashing light and it just open successfully. If you're here and you don't want to have to use the lock every time you go in and out, then simply turn this thumb screw 90 degrees so it's straight up and down and that will bypass the locking function so that the door does not lock when you close it, otherwise it will. So this is the main body of the treehouse. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you so that I can get some light in here, you'll be provided with a remote when you get here. Um, this is a remote that starts and stops the generator. To start it, you simply press the button on top, it says start, you'll see a little red light illuminate, let go, and you can hear the generator start right up. Shortly after that, the lights will pop on. So the the, the uh, treehouse is fully electrified. Um, there's outlets everywhere. Um, you can see. If you want to charge your phone, um, need lights for some reason, you, uh, you can use the generator. We ask that you use it sparingly. Um, no more than like two hours at a time and never overnight um, but it is convenient to have um, if you want to watch a, a DVD or some television there is a television here we have a uh, an analog antenna up in the tree you get probably eight to ten good channels um, including uh, the three major networks depending sometimes they come in really well sometimes they don't come in so well but if you bring a DVD, you, there's a DVD, Blu-ray DVD player there that you can use as well. You'll see also that there's uh, oil lamps everywhere. Um, they should be full when you're here. And you're welcome to use those as well. Simply turn... I always forget which way to turn it. Alright, turn it so the wick comes up. You lift off the globe, light it, and then you'll need to adjust this, trim the wick, in order to get uh, get the right light. If it's too high, you'll see a lot of black smoke, which is not good. Then you have to lower the wick. All right, again here, small kitchenette area. This has a small sink with hot and cold running water. Left is hot, right is cold. Again, please do not drink this water. Um, it is treated, but we, st we still don't want you drinking it. Um, here's the main uh, living area, seating area in the treehouse. There's a futon here, a um, little table you can play cards or whatever. Um, again, there's your TV, small quote unquote bathroom here. So the bathroom contains a composting toilet. Please refer to your house manual that I would have emailed you. For proper use of the toilet you want to study up before you get here um, to to know how to use it correctly it's a real convenience but you do know how to use it you do need to know how to use it correctly in order for it to function correctly so there's that over here there's a uh, a rolling cart be careful moving it in and out so as not to scrape the the treehouse siding, but um, on top you'll find a Coleman cook stove, propane cook stove, great for breakfast. Um, below here you'll find propane tanks that you'll need to uh, to use the stove. On the right hand side, obviously you need to pull it out to access them, but there's all sorts of pots and pans. Again, just about everything else you would need is provided for you here. Pots, pans, plates, dishes, uh, glassware, your mugs, silverware, everything you need except uh, the food and your clothes obviously should be provided. There's a spiral staircase that leads up to the upstairs sleeping loft. This is a, a 7 by 10 room um, that basically contains a double bed. 
There's a remote controlled light here for the ambiance of the candle. You use the remote control and don't use the uh, manual switch on the candle itself. Uh, not much else in here. A small bench. There's a Bluetooth speaker that you can uh, use off your phone. The, uh, the windows also come out. Um, there's one screen for the small windows here that you can put in during the evening if it's kind of hot in here. This window here can come out. It has a large screen. You have to be careful because it's a heavy window. There's a little roofing nail that actually holds the window in place. You pull that out and the window will lean in. You pull it out and replace the screen and then put the uh, put the screw back in there or the, the nail back in there to hold the window in place. This window here also has a screen available for it. Uh, I think that's basically everything uh, I wanted to show you. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on either of the, uh, the platforms that we're on. Also did want to mention, if you do stay here with us, we have a small guest book that we'd love you to, uh, to record your thoughts while staying here. If you have any questions, you can text me directly. My number is 315-380-7250. And uh, with that, uh, we'd love to have you stay. Thanks for watching.